Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session. I will briefly introduce some of the objectives of this training, and then I will pass it on to Dr. Raghav to speak about how this will be done and what are some examples of things that you could do with this. So the data science program is designed to introduce statistical analysis and machine learning, provide you with an understanding of how data is generated. So how you can, for example, think about your experiments if you're going to be using data science to analyze your own data or how to evaluate other people's data and spot trends that might represent technical versus biological variation. We'll talk about the significance of data mining and finding patterns that can lead to interpretation. So you can actually think about patterns that you identify, complex patterns that are not simply, let's say, differentiation between means of groups, but how to find these complex patterns and interpret their association. And then finally, how to study complex biological systems using big data. And so when I speak about complex biological systems, any system in our body, for example, whether it is uh, you know, our nervous system or uh, you know, immune system, these systems are complex because they represent many different cell types, they represent many different associations and connections, and they are also dynamic. So there's a time course component in them as well. And so when we look at data, how can we apply data science and machine learning and statistical analysis to be able to actually understand these biological systems. That is going to be the major objective of this program. So how are we going to do this? First of all, this is going to help you understand various types of omics data and understand how data analysis that you see in publications, for example, uh, are actually done and, and how they are representative of both the biology and the data side of things. Uh, you'll talk about, uh, you, you'll learn about the significance of exploratory analysis and actually how to prepare your data for, let's say, classification, how to prepare your data for biological interpretation. Uh, you'll be able to find patterns that are biologically explainable. And importantly, you'll learn how to communicate your findings to your peers. So you will be able to connect the dots between data preparation, data processing, data analysis, and biological significance. And I think the major objective here for most uh, of the participants that are joining today is to really understand, well, you know, how am I going to get to this where I am at, right? So maybe you are thinking, okay, these are some nice objectives, but how do I actually know that I am at the right level, that I have the prerequisites, that I'm ready for something like this? Well, that's exactly the goal of omics logic. Our goal is to actually be able to show you how anyone, whether you're a high school student, an undergraduate student, a postgraduate student, maybe a faculty, uh, and still you can benefit from this program. So I'm going to take a few slides uh, to speak about some of the important aspects of data science in general, and then speak about specifically how you can use the specific illustrations, case studies, and project examples that we will use in the full program to be able to understand uh, and, and achieve something with, with this kind of training. So um, first of all, uh, today I'll talk about uh, some of the specifics for biologists, right? We'll talk about data science, but specifically we're talking about data science for biological data. And I'll talk about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities for someone who is coming from a biological background. And I'll try to make sure that the logic for why you would need to study these things, why you would need to use these tools, how do you actually go from A to B and what would be the outcome? And so the goal of this whole training actually is going to be to be able to find and understand what data represents, how to prepare the data for analysis, learn code syntax, and be able to identify what is the question and how to answer it. And I think to understand why data science, it's important to understand what data science actually is. And that will help us kind of get back to that same point in a few slides and think about whether this is achievable. 
So data science, as you know, is the intersection between data, statistics, and some specialization domain. And so when we talk about statistics, typically we're referring to the balance between signal and noise in our data. Sometimes we can, for example, do some experiment and maybe every once in a while, we see some interesting pattern. Maybe the gene that we are interested in sometimes is expressed, sometimes is not expressed. And what we would like to know is whether we can generalize our understanding, whether what we see in our experiment could then be applied to biology in general. And so that's where statistics can help us. It can help us understand how random patterns are different from patterns that are reproducible, recurring, and significant. And so that is the difference between signal and noise. And to be able to spot signal and noise, we either need a lot of samples or we need to know some advanced methods that can extract those specific signals and help us identify the ones that are reliable and the ones that are not. Then on the data, we have in general, just the problem of noisy data and structured and unstructured data. The data is just not ready for the type of analysis that we would like to do. And this is especially true for complex data analysis. So when we, we think about machine learning, we typically think about data that has classes, that has many groups, those groups are well-defined. We don't have any failed processes because our data misses some uh, numbers or something like this. And so that is really the problem with data. And then of course, it's not important just to have some data, it's important to understand that data. And so when we speak about specialization, we can think about our understanding of that domain in terms of the terminology, in terms of the expected variability, and in terms of anticipated artifacts that we can try to identify, prevent, and avoid. And so that really brings us to a very similar chart that represents here bioinformatics. So today bioinformatics is less focused on maybe some niche applications of algorithms and computer science, and in general is becoming broader because data science applied to any kind of biological challenge or problem or question ends up using that specialization domain of biology. And so what are some things that we need to know in biology that are important for us to be able to work with data? Well, one of the things that we need to understand is how this data represents biological, uh, for example, phenomena, how this experiment produces data that I know uh, operates with certain elements and I understand those elements. So that specialization domain is really something that we need to think about as we uh, approach this topic of data science in bioinformatics. As you can see, bioinformatics and data science are very similar. The difference between them is that bioinformatics is very focused on biological problems and data science is focused on general application of these tools. And somewhere in the middle of both of these sits the term machine learning, right? So we actually want to incorporate machine learning because machine learning, when it is properly applied to the right kind of question, to the right kind of data and is interpretable, makes it useful for biological and biomedical discovery. And so today we'll briefly talk about some of these tools like supervised and unsupervised learning and speak about some of the differences between deep learning and machine learning as well. But let's first turn to data. So as you know, biomedical research is a, an engine that keeps on churning out new data sets all the time. So you can see this graph on the left, you can see that over the 27 years that NCBI has been around, there has been an exponential growth in the availability of data that actually is available for all of us. Uh, one of the examples is this current pandemic that we can see has produced such a tremendous amount of data that today, when you speak about mutations, variants, uh, sequencing, everyone knows these terms and not just people who specialize in that domain. And that just shows you not only an example of how data is generated, but also the trajectory, how this data will continue to be generated also in the future. Now, the problem is 
that most of this data that is being studied is actually unstructured. And so if we think about this process of data being generated and then how this data needs to be organized so that we can start mining it for patterns, we then understand that the process from raw data to actual insights and therefore action leads through a pipeline of data scientists, right? And so as we become more informed with data science, more skilled in data science methods, we now can participate in translating this raw data into action. And to do that, we need to understand the different types of data, and we need to be able to identify and learn how to use data that is already structured. So what is, in plain terms, the difference between structured and unstructured data? Well, if I take a survey, I can ask you, uh, what is your level of education? And many of you will have different answers. Somebody will say, I'm a graduate student. Someone will say, I am learning biology at university XYZ. Somebody will say, I'm a professor. So how do I analyze such a diverse set of answers? What I ultimately want to do is categorize everything that I have into just a few small groups and compare them between each other, similar to what I see here on the right. And that is really the difference. So how do I go from this unstructured stream of information being shared in different formats to ultimately something that is organized and easily comparable? Now, this is a simple example, but let's think about biology. Well, in biology, a lot of times we're dealing with high throughput automated technologies. These are technologies that can produce images, they can produce sequencing data like genomics, epigenomic peaks that I can study for a different kind of variation produced by epigenetic processes, or I can analyze gene expression tables. All of these different types of data come in an unstructured format. And the first goal that I have is to actually organize them into a table, into a matrix, because a matrix is something that now I can apply different types of data uh, methods, uh, data analysis methods too. So all of these types of data, imaging, mm -hmm. clinical, streaming data, omics data, chemical data, phenotypic data, what first we will need to do is to organize them as structured data. And once we have a lot of such data, now we can connect the dots between patterns and their biological interpretation. And so a major portion of what we will do in this program is link all of these steps together so that we have a coherent plan. We know how to approach these kinds of problems. We know what each data type represents, and we know how to get from raw to structure, to interpretable insights. Uh, so Narika, if you could please monitor the participants in terms of sound, that would be great. So ultimately, our goal is in the end to be able to ask questions, identify data sets, and produce answers that are reliable and can be used for actionable activities. So we'll talk about examples in basic research, translational research in biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry, as well as biomedical applications such as clinical trials and uh, precision medicine. Ultimately, the goal or what you should expect to have after you complete this program is number one, how to find data and understand what it represents. So we'll actually use a few case studies, examples that we will provide for you, but we will also guide you on how to find similar data sets on public repositories such as NCBI uh, and others. We'll also understand how to prepare data for analysis. So we'll talk about how this raw data could be downloaded or what are some effective tools for you to be able to use on the cloud so you don't have to deal with huge amounts of data that this represents and be able to process them and prepare them for analysis. You will also learn code syntax. So you understand not only how to read code, but which part of the code represents what type of method and how to modify that code so that you can apply it to a new data set that you're interested in.
as well as statistics and machine learning fundamentals. So that means that you can understand the principles. Why are we looking at p-values, at r squared, at uh, area under curve? What do these things actually mean? Then you will be able to look at a data problem and understand what is needed to solve that problem. So framing a problem correctly is very important because you'll be able to start asking questions that could actually be answered with a process. And then you will be able to navigate biological or biomedical references to be able to also interpret and validate results of the analysis. Because a lot of kind of questions to these machine learning methods is, well, what does this method really do? How do I interpret this? And how do I know that it's a valid interpretation? And finally, we'll also give you an opportunity to be able to communicate and contribute to data science and machine learning code of others or communicate your project results to others as well. So really, Omics Logic provides you with a complete roadmap to data science, specifically in application to biomedical research data. And we hope that this kind of training can simplify the path in this complex field of biomedical research from where you are today to where you ultimately want to be, which is whether you want to advance your career, develop your first research project, or use this kind of methodology in your current research. With that, I would be glad to briefly mention that all of this content is supported by an asynchronous library of materials that you can uh, refer to during the training. And this material is enriched by case studies in various domains designed to introduce the specific terminology, specific data sets, examples, and case studies that you can start with so that you can develop your own independent project with this kind of data in mind.